one example of a, a brain that has failed in an interesting way is the subject of one of my pieces. It's called The Mind's Eye Goes Blind. And what it is, is the story about a man, a retired building surveyor, who went to his doctor one day and said, you know, the weirdest thing has happened to me. If I close my eyes, I can't see anything. I can't picture anything with my mind's eye. Now, this was somebody who had actually been able to picture things in his mind very well through his life. And, and he could go to bed at night and think about the people he had seen during the day, or if he was reading a book, he could even picture the characters there, people he hadn't even seen. Uh, he was a building surveyor, which means that you really need to be able to picture uh, locations and buildings uh, in your mind. That's part of his job. And then one day it all stopped. It turns out that there's actually been very little study of this uh, aspect of the mind, you know, the mind's eye. What is it? And so here was an opportunity that neurologists had to look at somebody whose mind's eye was gone and then compare him to other people. And what's interesting is that, you know, he really, by all the tests you can give him, his mind's eye really is gone. I mean, he cannot picture things at all and you can actually measure that. Um, but, uh, at the same time, he seems to somehow be able to solve problems that you'd think you'd need your mind's eye for, you know, to solve problems about shapes and so on. So maybe there's some sort of backup mind's eye in the brain that we don't even know about. And we wouldn't have known about it if not for this person. Um, and what's really fascinating to me is just how little understood the brain is. And this is a case in point. So when I published this column, I started getting a ton of emails from people saying, whoa, I, I, this happened to me too. I haven't been able to see things for years. And so I would pass these, uh, these messages on to the doctors who had published this first report. And they've been really amazed in, at, at all the reaction we've been getting. And they've been getting in contact with some of these people. And, you know, I don't know if this will lead to even a bigger study, but it shows that there was this sort of hidden population of people who've lost their mind's eye, and we didn't really even know about them. We still don't really know how they lost it or how our mind's eye worked. So we're just at the beginning of it, but it's still really fascinating. One of the great things about working on the pieces for brain cuttings is getting to m meet the scientists who are studying the brain and figuring out how it works and talking to them about about their work and, and their ideas. They're a really fascinating bunch. I mean, one of the most interesting is someone named Giulio Tononi. Um, he's at the University of Wisconsin. And when he was maybe like 16, he decided that he was going to figure out what consciousness is. And, that, and he's really made that his goal ever since. Um, but he's done it in a pretty practical way, actually. Um, he, for example, has opened up a sleep lab at the University of Wisconsin because sleep is one of the uh, biggest experiences we have with a change in consciousness. Every night we go to sleep, and we lose consciousness, we wake up in the morning, we get it back. So whatever it is, we lose it and we get it every day. Um, and so he is working on trying to figure out you know, why we have trouble sleeping, um, sleep disorders. I mean, it's a huge industry of trying to help people to sleep better. And he's trying to get at some basic clues about why people have trouble by understanding what sleep is and what consciousness is. Um, he's actually created uh, a strain of fruit flies that have mutations that cause them trouble with sleeping. So it turns out that fruit flies and we actually use some of the same genes to control our sleep. One of the most interesting things that Tononi uh, looks into is anesthesia. Um, I always assumed that neuroscientists knew exactly how anesthesia works. Uh, and uh, it turns out that they don't. Um, it, actually, anesthesia is incredibly mysterious. Um, if you give people certain gases, we just go out and then we come back later. Um, and so scientists, they can tell you like which drugs work and which don't, but they can't really tell you why. And so Tononi is trying to figure that out. Um, he actually got into kind of a, a tussle with an anesthesiologist when he was about to have surgery. He was going in to have surgery and he said to this anesthesiologist, I want to know what consciousness is. Maybe we could do an experiment while I'm having surgery. Uh, and he described this whole idea that he was coming up with in his head. 
And the anesthesiologist was just sort of nodding, like, uh-huh, okay, and then just knocked him out. He wasn't interested in the big questions, but Tononi is. And a lot of these scientists in brain cuttings really are obsessed with, with the, some of the most fundamental questions about who we are and how our brains work.